All right. Hello, pre-calculus students. Um, I'm sorry that I'm not there with you today. Uh, my little boy's sick at home, so that's where I'm at. Um, but uh, w the show must go on. So uh, today is day two notes. Uh, so this is unit one, day two. And uh, the title of this section is Reference Angles. So along with reference angles, we're also going to be talking about right triangle trig. So if you want to say maybe slash, uh, and we'll say right triangle trig. OK. Um, whoops, right trig trig. Let me fix that. OK. Uh, so let's first start out with a definition. Our definition is going to be what a reference angle is. So we'll say the positive acute angle, positive acute angle formed by the terminal side. and uh, the terminal side of an angle in standard position and the x-axis. Wow, what a definition there. Uh, that seems a little complicated, uh, but reference angles. Uh, so this is, um, uh, is uh, so we'll maybe say here, I didn't put the definition. It says a positive acute angle formed by uh, the terminal side of an angle in, in the standard position and the x-axis is called uh, a reference angle. Okay, we'll underline that. Uh, so, um, that might seem a little confusing, uh, but hopefully our examples will, um, will kind of make it more clear. Something that's important to note is that reference angles uh, are always between two different angles. Uh, so, reference angles are always between always between 0 degrees and 90 degrees or uh, in radians, that's between 0 and pi over 2, uh, if you remember. Uh, so now let's do some examples. Uh, so examples. Here's the first example. Uh, so I'm going to say, um, uh, so find the reference angle. Uh, so here, this is um, this is number one, so negative 20 degrees. Uh, so what we want to do is maybe we will uh, sketch a little picture of a an axis here, uh, and we want to sketch negative 20 degrees. So remember, negative means it goes backward. Uh, so this is my angle of negative 20 degrees. And uh, now let's look back carefully at the definition of what a reference angle is. It says it's the positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of an angle in the standard position and the x-axis. It's called a reference angle. So here's the terminal side right here, and here's the x-axis, and we want a positive angle. So this is currently negative 20 degrees, so the reference angle for this one is just going to be simply a positive 20 degrees. Okay, well, let's try another one. Here's number two. Uh, let's, again, uh, put down the angle, so 160 degrees, and then we'll put an axis down. Uh, we'll sketch the 160. Here's our 160 degrees. It looks something like this. Uh, it's 20 degrees short of 180. And, um, and now we want to find the reference angle. Uh, so what is... Uh, what is the reference angle? The reference angle is this much. Uh, it says the po smallest 
Uh, so it's the positive acute angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. Uh, so the x-axis is down here, uh, right here, and so we want this angle. This is the angle between the terminal side and the x-axis, and this is 20 degrees. So again, 20 degrees is the reference angle for number two here. So 20 and 60, negative 20 degrees and 60 degrees have the same reference angle. Uh, let's try a couple more to kind of get the hang of this. Uh, so here's another one. Let's n do a big one. Negative uh, 540 degrees. Uh, let's try that. Uh, so let's put our axes in and just kind of get an idea uh, of what negative 540 would be. So this is, that would be 360. I've gone all the way around backward, that's clockwise, uh, 360 degrees. Uh, so what if I go, um, let's see, another 100 degrees or 90 degrees, that's going to take me up to, if I go 90 there, uh, that would take me from 360 to 4. 50, and I can probably go another 90, so to 450, and then that's going to take me to 540, and then I need to go five more degrees, just like that. So this big angle that I have just drawn is negative 545 degrees, and the reference angle is this tiny little angle right there. Uh, so that tiny little angle is just 5 degrees. Uh, so that is the reference angle. That's how much further uh, from, uh, from 180 there that that is. Uh, so you always draw the reference angle to the x-axis. Uh, so always to the x-axis. Let's try another one. So here, how about 300? Okay, uh, so for 300, uh, let's draw that. It's a positive angle, so it's going to go around clockwise. 270 is right here. We need to go 30 degrees more. Now, you might be tempted to use this angle right here, that small bit, but that's to the y-axis. We always want to draw our angle, our reference angle to the x-axis, between the terminal side and the x-axis. So the question is, is how many degrees are we away from 360? And the answer is 60 degrees. Uh, so 60 degrees would be our reference angle for number four. Uh, good. Let's try a few in radians now. Uh, so let's try, um, uh, let's switch colors. Uh, so let's do number five. And uh, let's try 10 pi over 3, and we need the reference angle for this. So let's sketch that. Uh, so we know that uh, this would be 3 pi over 3. And if I go all the way around, that's 2 pi or 6 pi over 3. I need to keep going because I want 10 pi over 3. So what if I do another 180? Uh, so that's right there, so that's going to be three more, so that would be the same as um, six plus three, so it's nine pi over three, there we go. Uh, and I need to go one more pi over three. There we go. Uh, so this angle that I've just drawn is ten pi over three. Uh, and this little bit right here, the reference angle, is how far away I am from the x-axis is simply just pi over 3. I went one more pi over 3 than 9 pi over 3, uh, so the reference angle is pi over 3, which is the same as 60 degrees. All right, let's try another one. Minus 5 pi over 8. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's go ahead and draw our axes down. And I know that this is 0 pi over 8, and this would be 4 pi over 8, and this would be 8 pi over 8. Uh, but we want to go backwards, so this is negative 4 pi over 8. And so I need to go uh, one, negative 1 more pi over 8, so right here. Uh, so from here to here, this is minus 5 pi over 8. Now the question is, how far away am I from the x-axis? So this is our reference angle right here. So how many pi over 8s am I away uh, from 8 pi, negative 8 pi over 8? And the answer is I am 3 pi over 8. So 3 pi over 8 is the reference angle uh, here. So that's, it's how far the smallest, if we look back at the definition, the positive acute 
angle uh, between the terminal side and the x-axis. It's always the x-axis, never the y-axis. Uh, so that's key for those there. Uh, let's do a couple more in radians. Here's number seven. Uh, so negative pi over four. Uh, let's try that one. Uh, so we want to sketch an axis. And then minus pi over four. Here's our initial side, our terminal side is right there. This is minus pi over 4. Uh, there's our angle. And uh, let's see. So uh, now the reference angle is this much. Uh, so the reference angle is always to the x-axis. And that much is exactly the absolute value of the angle, or just pi over 4. So the reference angle for negative pi over 4 is just pi over 4. Uh, let's try one more of these, and then we'll move on. Uh, so here we go. Uh, this one will say, how about negative 7 pi over 3? Uh, that's good. Uh, so the initial side is right here. That's the initial. And uh, this is 0 pi over 3, and this is negative pi, 3 pi over 3. Um, and then if I go all the way around again, so there to there, this would be negative 6 pi over 3. That's 2 pi. And then I need to go one more pi over 3 down. So this angle right here is negative 7 pi over 3 all the way around. And uh, this little bit, just this much, is the reference angle. And so our reference angle is just one more pi over 3 past uh, 6 pi over 3. So this is going to be just pi over 3. So that is our reference angle for 7 pi over 3. So these sometimes are easier to visualize when you sketch them, but you want to get pretty good at uh, being able to find the reference angle without having to sketch them. Uh, good. Well, now let's... Um, Let's do some more definitions before we go on. That's what a reference angle is, and now what we want to do is kind of do a little bit of geometry review. Uh, we want to kind of go back to right triangles. Uh, so we've talked a lot about uh, angles, uh, but now what we wanted to do is specifically dredge up those trig functions that we learned way back in geometry. So here's some more definitions. Um, so the first definition was what a right triangle is. Uh, a right triangle is just a triangle that has a right angle. Triangles can only have one right angle. You can't have multiple right angles. So if it has just one, which it can only have one, uh, then it's a right triangle. The next definition is hypotenuse. Make sure I've spelled that right, hypotenuse. Uh, and that is the longest side, longest side in a, a triangle, in a right triangle of a right triangle. Uh, and I guess it's important to note that it's always opposite the right angle. So you could just write this in parentheses below. Uh, it's always opposite the right angle. Yeah. OK, next definition is what an adjacent side is. Uh, C. Adjacent side. Uh, so we'll call this uh, the included side of an angle. And typically we'll abbreviate with uh, abbreviate adjacent with ADJ. Uh, we'll abbreviate hypotenuse with HYP. And then the last type of side is the opposite side. Which, uh, it all depends on which angle you pick, but the opposite side is the excluded side of the angle. The excluded. So we'll write OPP. So 
if you would draw a picture for this here, uh, so if you want, uh, we can draw a little triangle. Uh, well, typically we use the Greek letter theta to represent an angle, so I'm going to let theta be this angle right here. And notice how I put this little square in the corner. If you remember from geometry, that's the right angle. Uh, so the right opposite the right angle up here is the hypotenuse. That's always the case. And since I picked my angle theta to be right here, that means that the excluded side, the one that it does not that theta does not include, which is over here, is the opposite side. And the angle that theta or the side that theta does include is called the adjacent side. There we go. Now this would be very different if uh, if I chose a, a different angle up here, say this this one to be my angle, then this side would be the opposite, uh, and this would be the adjacent. So the the opposite and adjacent would switch depending on uh, which angle you pick. So I'll just erase those. So just know that opposite and adjacent are dependent on the angle. Okay. Uh, let's see, what next? So now that we have the sides of a triangle labeled, we can start to talk about the trig functions. Uh, so let's write all six trig ratios. So we'll just say trigonometric ratios. Uh, so you might remember this from geometry as so, ka, toa, uh, I remember that. I learned that ages ago. You probably did too. Uh, but they, there are six trig functions that we want to write down, uh, and here they are. So sine, uh, S-I-N-E, uh, and typically what we would write is, uh, to abbreviate this, is just S-I-N, and then we will put an angle behind it, uh, like theta over there on the right, and sine represents the opposite over the hypotenuse. Yeah, uh, well, sine has a specific function that corresponds to it, um, and uh, I'll write that in a different color here next to it. It's cosecant. And we abbreviate that CSC theta, and it's just a flip of sine. So that's going to be hypotenuse over opposite. So cosecant is the flip of sine. Uh, let's do the next function, which you are probably familiar with, is cosine. And cosine we abbreviate COS. And that is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse side. And cosine has a pair function that we call secant. And we abbreviate secant just SEC, and that is the flip. So the ratio flipped of secant would be, uh, that's the hypotenuse divided by the adjacent. Yeah, okay, we have one more special function, uh, a special trig that's called tangent. Uh, so tangent. Uh, I'm sorry, two, uh, two trig functions. Tangent has a pair, uh, but we'll write them down. There's six in total. Tangent, and we abbreviate tangent, T-A-N, and that's opposite. The ratio is opposite over adjacent. And the pair function for tangent is cotangent. And we abbreviate cotangent, C-O-T. And it's just a flip, so it's uh, adjacent over opposite. Yeah, all right, cool. So there are all of our six trig functions. Let me maybe uh, uh, kind of highlight those uh, here so that we can see them very clearly. So there's the first original three, uh, and then here are the other three. Yeah, so a total of six. Okay, good. Um, I guess I just may want to make a little note that uh, when I ask for an, an exact answer on a test, so maybe you can write this, exact answers are, I'm going to say, non-rounded, uh, non-decimal, 
Uh, well, um, I should be careful what I say here. It's not necessarily decimal. Uh, it could be a decimal answer, for example, uh, five, um, five, uh, 5 over 4, that's a decimal. You could write that as a decimal and it's exact. Um, so it, it may be decimal, but um, uh, in order for it to be exact, usually we want pi to be included. So answers should be in terms of pi. Uh, answers in terms of pi. So you don't multiply the pi in, you leave pi in there. Uh, answers in terms of pi and uh, square roots. For example, if I have something like five square roots of two, um, I could punch that into my calculator, and my calculator is going to give me five times, uh, like, uh, the square root of two is uh, like 1.414 or something like that. Uh, so it's going to multiply those two numbers, which is rounded. So this one's rounded, and this one's exact. Okay. Um, when you round, um, you're you're usually cutting off decimal places of precision. Uh, so in trigonometry and most of mathematics, we're concerned with precision and things that are exact. Uh, we don't really care about uh, rounded answers. Uh, it, most um, most science courses are going to be concerned with tolerance and how far away you are from a number. That's a different study than mathematics. Mathematics cares about precise things, about what is exactly true, um, not just what are rounded. Good. Okay, well, let's uh, do a few examples of our trig functions that we've just learned here. So let's go down and do maybe a couple examples. Um, so our example, I think I'm maybe up to example, I think I'm up to maybe nine or something like that. I can't remember what the previous page said. Um, eight, nine. So let's do example nine. Uh, it says use uh, the trig eva uh, to evaluate the six trig function. So let's put a triangle, uh, a triangle on uh, the board here, uh, a right triangle, and I'm going to go ahead and label these sides. Um, like that, and I'll put a theta in here, and I'm going to say find all six trig functions. So find all six trig ratios. Okay, well, uh, so sine of theta. So here's theta. Now the opposite side is 5 then, and this must be the adjacent side, and this must be the hypotenuse. So remember, sine of theta, that's the so, S-O-H, uh, so that's the little mnemonic, is 5 over 13, oppos uh, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. And now let's do the co-functions. Uh, so like a cosecant. Uh, cosecant is going to be the flip of sine, so 13 over 5. Uh, secant, the pair of cosine, is 13 over 12. And then the pair of tangents, cotangent, and that's going to be 12 over 5. Yeah, there they are. Cool all six trig functions of one triangle. So what what exactly is that telling me? Uh, sometimes it's hard, you know, to understand what exactly does that mean. Well, they're telling me the ratio. Uh, these are ratios. It, it tells me a proportion, uh, how much uh, that angle uh, is measuring of this side. Uh, so it's giving me uh, a ratio that's uh, specific to that angle theta. Uh, if I change the angle theta, the ratios on the edges of the triangle are going to change. So this angle, I don't know what the angle is, but I do know what ratios the angle will produce. Uh, yeah, they're very valuable. Uh, we'll use them throughout the course. Uh, so let's do another one. Uh, here's number 10. Um, so what if I have a triangle, triangle ABC has um, uh, right angle C has a right angle 
C, and A is 8, and B, the side length B is 15. I'm going to say find all six trig ratios. Uh, so we'll say find all six trig ratios uh, of A and angle B. So we have two angles here, angle A and angle B. Uh, so I want to find sine of A, cosine of A, tangent of A, and then I want to find the other ones. I want to find uh, cosecant A, uh, secant A, and cotangent A. So I'm looking for all six trig of A and all six trig of B. So we'll do those next, though. First, let's find the triangle. Uh, so let's put our triangle right here in uh, below this problem. We know that angle C is the right angle. And uh, I'll just label. It doesn't matter where I put A and B. It's uh, symmetrical. We can put it in either side. Uh, so it doesn't really quite matter at this point. Um, but we do know that B, this side right here, is opposite the side. Angle B is 15. Angle A and opposite angle A is side A is 8. And in order to find the hypotenuse there, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, so we know that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, so that implies, in this case, 8 squared plus 15 squared is c squared, uh, or 64 plus 225 is c squared. Uh, so if I add these two together, that's 60, uh, 64 plus 225. Um, there we go. Uh, square root, I think 17. Um, so if I square root both sides, uh, so you get plus or minus 17 if you square root both sides, but technically since we have a side length here, we just want 17. All right, let's go ahead and answer our questions. Uh, so where is angle A? Angle A is right here. So let's answer all six of these. Uh, so um, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Uh, tangent is opposite 8 over adjacent, which is 15. And now these other ones will just flip the ratios. So the flip of sine is 17 over 8. The flip of cosine is 17 over 15. And the flip of tangent is 15 over 8. Now we can find all of the uh, all of the six trig functions for uh, for the angle B as well. So maybe we'll squeeze those in over here. So sine angle B, cosine angle B, uh, tangent angle B, and then we want the the co function. So cosecant. Uh, whoops, I put a theta there. How about we do cosecant B, and um, uh, secant B, and then cotangent B. Okay, so the angle B now it, we're looking at is right here. So we're looking at a different angle. So that means the opposite side is now 15. Uh, so sine of angle B is 15, uh, let's use blue there, is 15 over 17. Uh, cosine angle B is 8 over 17. And tangent angle B is 15 over 8. And now the other, the pairs, uh, are just flipped. So this one's going to be 17 over 15, uh, 17 over 8, and 8 over 15. Yeah, cool. That's a lot of evaluation. Uh, so trig functions pertain to right triangles. You can't take sine of an angle uh, that's not, uh, well, when, when you take sine of an angle, we're referring to the ratio of sides in a right triangle. Uh, so that's, uh, that's what you want to be thinking about in your mind when you were taking these. Uh, there are some special uh, right triangles that we want to think about. Uh, so that's what we're actually going to do on the next page. And this is the last thing that we'll do today. Uh, so and then you can go ahead and get started on your homework after this. Um, so let's, uh, let's do these uh, here. This is um, special right triangles. Uh, so special 
uh, special right triangles and um, uh, the, there are two of them that we refer to uh, throughout the rest of this course and uh, today we're just going to talk about one of them uh, so let's draw a nice big axis here uh, really big it's you should probably draw it in the center of your paper uh, so it takes up quite a bit of space uh, just like this so this is my X and my Y and we're going to draw this right triangle on the axes here. Uh, so let's sketch. Uh, we want it to be a 30 degree angle, so something like this. There we go. And the right angle is sitting on the x-axis. Uh, so the right angle sits on the x-axis. We'll label this as 30 degrees. And I'm going to say that that is the same thing as pi over 6 radians if you remember. Uh, and what does that leave up here? Uh, this other angle up here must be 60 degrees. Uh, so remember, in a triangle, there has to be a total of 180 degrees. So if I have 30 and uh, 90 uh, and something else plus blank uh, equals 180, uh, then that means 120 plus something is 180. Uh, subtract the 120 to find out that this is 60, the blank uh, that we were missing there. So the, the missing angle is 60 degrees, or you can refer to that as pi over 3 radians. Okay, well, what is the ratio of the sides of this triangle? Uh, the ratio is important, and you're going to have to commit this to memory. This special right triangle is going to help you all the way through trigonometry. Uh, so we, I will keep referring to this again and again. So this isn't something that you want to forget. Uh, so let me write this down. There are three side lengths that you have to remember. Uh, so maybe I'll just put them in a box right here. Uh, the three side lengths are 1, 2, and square root of 3. So you can remember 1, 2, 3. But now those are the three side lengths. We have to decide where to put them on the triangle. Well, the largest side should go opposite the largest angle. So which one of these three is the biggest? 1, 2, or the square root of 3? I know that the square root of 4 is 2, so the square root of 3 has to be less than 2. So 2 is the biggest. The biggest side has to go opposite the right angle. Remember, the hypotenuse is always the largest. So 2 has to go opposite the right angle. And the next biggest side is the square root of 3, and the next biggest angle is 60. So the square root of 3 must go here, opposite the 60-degree angle. That leaves 1 to go opposite the 30-degree angle. So there we go. Uh, that's our right triangle. Uh, okay, well, what if I were to draw a 150-degree angle? Uh, so 150 degrees, uh, that would draw a triangle over here, just like this. And let's put a right angle here. That's going to leave a 30-degree reference angle. Remember, we just learned reference angles. So uh, 150 degrees is the same thing as uh, 5 30 degrees, or 5 pi over 6. Uh, so this is another 30, 60, 90 triangle. And uh, the ratio that we want to use here is exactly the same as the ratio over here. So this is a 1, this is a 2, and this is a square root of 3. But the only difference is this square root of 3 is going in the negative x direction. So we're actually going to label a direction on the side of a triangle. This is something that we never did in geometry. Uh, we didn't say negative lengths. You can't have negative lengths. But since we're putting these triangles on a coordinate system, this uh, square root of 3 should be negative because we're going in a negative direction. Uh, okay, well, let's continue. Let's keep rotating around. What if I rotate down another 30 degrees? That's 30 degrees more than uh, 180. That's 210 
degrees. So let's draw another 30, 60, 90 triangle. So this is 30 degrees, this is 60 degrees, and this is the, the right triangle, or the right angle. Uh, so this side is 1, but since we went down, it's a negative 1. The hypotenuse is still 2, and the hypotenuse will always be positive in our triangles here, and this side is still a square root of 3, uh, a negative square root of 3. And if I continue this angle around and go 30 degrees less than 360, this is going to be 330. Uh, so here, this right triangle, this special right triangle, again, we have a square root of 3. Maybe I'll scoot that square root of 3 closer to the, uh, to the, uh, to the leg that it's, that's corresponding to. Um, let's get my pen back. This side is going to be 1, but it's negative since we're going down, and the hypotenuse is always 2. So this is a 30-degree reference angle, and this is 60 degrees. Uh, OK, uh, so the reason I put these on the quadrants is because each one of these represents an angle in uh, in degrees and radians. So notice that this reference triangle right here, this one in quadrant 2, refers to this 150 degree angle. So this angle right here that's created, we could label that as 5 pi over 6 or 150 degrees. Now this one, that's 30 degrees more than 180 right here, this one is going to be 210 degrees or we could say that that one's going to be 7 pi over 6. It's one more pi over 6 greater than pi, so that this pi is 6 pi over 6, so if we go 5 pi over 6, 6 pi over 6, this must be 7 pi over 6. Uh, and this one over here, uh, if this is 2 pi, which is the same thing as 12 pi over 6, we want to go one less, so this is 11 pi over 6, or the same thing as 330 degrees. Uh, so each one of these angles corresponds to a triangle. And that triangle, we can actually use the ratios in those sides. So now we can talk about all six trig functions with these triangles. So now we want to do some examples. Uh, so here's our next example. Let's see. What did we end on? We were at example... Uh, ten, 8 and 9, 10, so this is 11, I guess, uh, so 11. Um, so the first one is sine pi over 6. What is that? So that's the same thing as sine of 30 degrees, but let's go look at that triangle. So this is our right here, this is our 30 degrees, or pi over 6. Um, and so we want to look at the ratios in this specific triangle. Uh, so sine is going to be opposite is 1, and hypotenuse is 2. Uh, so 1 half is what the ratio is for sine. Good. Let's do another one. What about cosine pi over 6? So, so let's look again at the same triangle. Here's the 30 degree angle that we're looking at. So the adjacent side is square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So we want square root of 3 over 2. Uh, well, what about tangent pi over 6? Uh, okay, well, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so that is uh, 1 over the square root of 3. Uh, well, what about sine of 5 pi over 6? So now, this is in a different quadrant. So let's look over here. So 5 pi over 6 is this angle uh, up in this upper, the second quadrant, and uh, if I do sine of this reference triangle, or this reference angle right here, I'm going to get 1 over 2, so 1 half. But what if I do cosine of 5 pi over 6? Well, let's look up here. The adjacent side is negative square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2, so negative square root of 3 over 2. Uh, 16, let's do tangent 5 pi over 6. The opposite side is 1, and the adjacent side is negative square root of 3. So 1 divided by the negative square root of 3. 
Uh, let's see, what do I do next? Um, how about we try, um, let's switch it up, so cosine of 7 pi over 6. So 7 pi over 6 is right here, down here in the quadrant 3. And cosine means that we want the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is negative square root of 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So negative square root of 3 over 2. Uh, let's do a different one. How about tangent of 11 pi over 6? So 11 pi over 6 is this one right here in quadrant 4. Uh, so we want tangent. So we're looking at this angle, the reference triangle there. So tangent is going to be opposite the negative 1 over the square root of 3. So we want negative 1 over square root of 3, opposite over adjacent. Let's try 19 here. Um, how about we do switch uh, to one of those other trig functions? How about secant of 11, the same angle, 11 pi over 6? Uh, so secant of 11 pi over 6. And that is going to be uh, this same quadrant, so in the uh, fourth quadrant. And secant is the flip of cosine, so we want hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's 2 over the square root of 3. So cosine of 11 pi over 6 would be square root of 3 over 2, but we want to flip that to get 2 over the square root of 3. How about, we've done all of those in radians, how about we do a few in degrees here. Uh, so let's try number 20, uh, let's try this in degrees. How about we do something like cosine of 150 degrees. Uh, well, that's in quadrant 2 up here, uh, cosine of 150, so we're talking about this uh, angle. So adjacent is this negative square root of 3 over 2. Uh, so negative square root of 3 is the adjacent, and 2 is the hypotenuse. All right, let's try 21. Uh, maybe we'll do cotangent of, how about we do negative 150? Uh, so negative 150 means that I need to go backward 150 degrees, so that's right there. So I'm looking at this reference triangle for 150, and that is... Uh, we want cotangent, so we want adjacent is the square, negative square root of 3 over opposite is negative 1. So negative square root of 3 over negative 1 is a positive square root of 3. All right, let's do maybe, maybe do a couple more. So sine, let's do an easier one, sine of negative 30. Uh, so negative 30 means you go backward 1. Uh, 30. So we're looking at this triangle right here. Uh, and so if I do sine of that angle, you're going to get opposite, negative 1, and then over hypotenuse, which is 2. So negative 1 half. That's sine. All right. Um, maybe let's do two more. 23, and then we'll do 24. Uh, so 23. How about we say tangent, let's see, I did tangent, cotangent of one fifth, negative 150. So what if I did tangent of negative 150 degrees? Well, that's just going to be the flip of number 21. Look at number 21, that's cotangent of negative 50. So let's just flip, flip this square root of 3 over 1. So I'm just going to flip it to be 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, uh, well, what about cosine? Let's do a harder one negative 210. Okay, so 210 degrees. If I go negative 180, that's right here, I need to go 30 degrees more. So I'm looking at this quadrant 2 reference triangle, and I want to do cosine. So that's the adjacent side is negative square root of 3 over hypotenuse is 2. Uh, so we want negative square root of 3 over the hypotenuse, which is 2. There we go. Uh, that's quite a bit of work. Um, so hopefully this um, this was helpful. If if this was a, a difficult uh, uh, lesson for you, uh, take heart. Don't 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 get too concerned. Um, we can we can talk about it when I get back. Um, and you can rewatch the video too, or slow it down, or speed it up if you need needed to, I guess. But. Um, um, you should have worksheet two uh, on the back there. Uh, and at this point, uh, it would probably be a good idea to go to MathSpace.
mathspace.co again, remember, and then you want to use login, login with Clever, and use your FCPS Blackboard, uh, FCPS Blackboard password and username, and um, and once you're there, you, there should be a unit one day two uh, exit ticket. Maybe there's like six six problems or something like that. Um, I can't remember. So try those six problems. They should be about reference angles and some of the things that we learned today. You might not have those special right triangles in there yet. Uh, worksheet number two is all about reference angles in the quadrant in which those reference angles end. If you go to my Blackboard page, you should be able to, uh, so on my Blackboard, if you go to course materials, Uh, materials and then you go to unit one and then from unit one you go to um, uh, there should be uh, solutions solutions to uh, worksheet number two and you can check your your reference angle uh, answers there. Uh, so if you would take this time at the end of class uh, to work on worksheet two and the, the math space uh, work there to finish that exit ticket. I can see if you completed that uh, on my computer. Uh, so I'm checking that you guys are doing those and seeing how far you're getting on those. Um, uh, so I think that's all I have for you. I will see you guys again next Wednesday. Remember that we're off Labor Day, September 3rd, so that's Monday. Uh, so I hope you have a good weekend. Uh, I'm, again, I'm sorry that I'm not there. Um, but uh, I will see you guys next week.